In 2017, Zimbabwe Warriors clashed with Desert Foxes of Algeria in Franceville well at the African Finals in Gabon. It was a match the Warriors were underdogs, but Kama Billiard and company defied odds to draw to all. A lot has happened since then. More than three years later, how can Zimbabwe stop Algeria, the reigning African champions, especially at a time when Zimbabwe will play home matches outside the country after a CAF Stadium's ban announced yesterday? Well, hello and welcome to the couch. I'm Shamin Chasweka. And my name is Howard Msonza. A special thanks to our partners, Home A and GTEL. You're watching The Couch on ZTN. You can also follow us on our website, ztn.co.zw. In the studio, we've got the Couch Squad, as usual, Makomborero Mutimkulu and Momoyo. I'm tempted to, to just ask uh, one or two questions. Uh, you guys, you're looking smart. Yes, thank you very much. We're yeah, used to but, that. Uh, <laughs> how are you feeling after devastating news yesterday? It's a train smash. It's a train smash. Uh, it's like you've been evicted. Yeah, but what I know, we're going to break it down right here. True. Uh, as well as uh, the news on Algeria. And uh, did you ever play for the Warriors? Yeah, I did. Uh, you did? Wait, yeah. Wait. <laughs> wait. 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 Uh, I played versus Mozambique. Ah, uh, look at the team. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, playing for the Warriors is playing for the Warriors. Wait, no, it's fine. It's fine. friendly. It's fine. Have you ever played for the national team of uh, journalists? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I have. I played for the Warriors. But how, how are you? I'm very well. Simu mm. There's a feeling that comes when you put that hand on the page, my brother. So that's the couch squad, Momo and my Komborero Mutimukulu. But we've got a guy, a special guest in studio, who played against Algeria. Yeah, Shaman was talking about that two or draw, Kama Billiard and company. But uh, there's something special. Our uh, first appearance at the Africa Cup of Nations, we beat Algeria by two goals to one. And uh, there was a guy who was doing stuff for Zimbabwe in that game. Joel Lupasha, welcome to the couch. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Mm. So you can tell more something about the Warriors because <laughs> he played against Mozambique. You played yeah. against Algeria. We are talking about Algeria. <laughs> so yeah, those are the guys that we've got on the couch, but it doesn't end there. Another special guest. This time, guest artist. Yes, and our guest artist today is not a musician, but somebody interesting. <laughs> we have Butisi in the studio, and his real name is Admaya Kujangaira. Welcome to the couch. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> we are so happy to have you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sure. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy Imagine. You know, one comedians my comedian, they say, you so uh, my base is Obo. Yeah. Obo, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be coming back to you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, our topic for today is how can Zimbabwe contain Algeria in the back to back Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers set for next month, yeah, towards the end of uh, March at home. We are also saying Zimbabwe playing home matches away from home. What does this mean? But before we go deep into that, we look at the training football stories. We start with the UEFA Champions League matches played last night. Chelsea suffered a 3 0 defeat at Stamford Bridge against Bayern Munich. It was an emphatic performance by the German side, which leaves the London side on the brink. Marcus Alonso saw red in that match in the second half. And Italy, Barcelona needed an Antonio Griezmann equalizer to force a draw against Napoli. So these are the two games uh, that uh, we, we, we're going to be talking about. Uh, our deliberately skip the Chelsea Bayern. Okay. Yeah, because I've got vested interest. I know, that's fine. That's fine. But uh, Napoli versus Barcelona. But well, there's a sign that they're doing in football these days. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we go back to the Chelsea game. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, uh, for Chelsea, those are youngsters. And it showed yesterday, last night. Um, for 45 minutes, they tried to hold it down together, but look, Lampard has got Young boys, he needs about three, four experienced hands. Barcelona, good for Griezmann to score because he hasn't really set uh, the club alight since arriving. Um, but you think Barcelona will go through, and obviously Bayern will also go through. Joe, which team do you support? 
um, internationally? Um, I'm a main United fan, so I'm not. So we, we can't really Chelsea talk about. <laughs> we can't really talk about uh, the Champions. Maybe the VAR that you were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> we, we're playing tomorrow. We're playing tomorrow, but. He's talking about, you know, the youngsters that Chelsea has. Yes. You are a coach and I know you're a proponent, you know, for the youngsters. You want yeah. to prop up the youngsters. If you are Lampard, the highest level of football, you are facing a Bayern side. What do you do? Do you stick to the youngsters or you take the play players that have not been playing regularly, you put them there, the likes of Marcus Alonso? Uh, I think for, for Lampard, he, he did well. He's trying to build these boys and as a young player, Sometimes you need to go through the trapping for you to be a better player. So I support his decision uh, that he, he made to, to go with the youngsters. Because he's building for the future and he's a young coach also. So obviously you'll find that he has worked with his young boys uh, at the academy. He's got trust in them. And I support him. Mm, they'll come right someday. Yeah. Right, you're watching the cut right here <coughs> on Zim Papers TV Network. Now in UEFA Champions League fixtures lined up tonight. Lyon are at home when they uh, face Juventus, while Real Madrid are in a massive clash with Manchester City at Santiago Bernabeu. So yeah, these are the two games that are on uh, tonight. Uh, Lyon uh, playing against Juve, then uh, Real Madrid against Manchester City. Um, right. Tough fixtures. Very tough, especially the Manchester City Juve game. Uh, Manchester City has been doing. <coughs> doing well recently uh, they've not had a good season but uh, they've been winning uh, in the EPL uh, if you look at Real Madrid uh, it's not really uh, looking good uh, last week they lost and uh, at the same time they lost the top spot to Barcelona so it's, it's never easy they are also going to meet Barcelona after Manchester City so you can never they can never concentrate on the smash only they are also thinking ahead of of themselves, but I would like to believe uh, Pep Guardiola has got a point to prove since uh, Liverpool has run away with the EPL. Probably thinks he can do better here. Then, if you look at the Juve Lyon match, um, Lyon it's just a small team compared to Juve, they can't <laughs> beat Juve <laughs> so, uh, unless if a miracle happens. But uh, all uh, facts lead to a Juve win. You talk about Lyon as a small team, playing big guns like uh, Juve. So there's a trend that we've seen in the past decade. Uh, it's been Lionel Messi versus Cristiano Ronaldo. Lionel mm. Messi, uh, Barcelona played last night. Uh, now Cristiano Ronaldo will be playing for Juve. Um, and we've seen these guys breaking records. True. Is this a chance for maybe Cristiano? Yeah, just as a side, for a guy who, small, who calls, <coughs> played for small teams, I mean, it's quite rich for more to say that Leon is a small team. A guy who played for Baimo, Caps FC, I think he knows what small teams are. But Leon are not a small team. Um, Cristiano would, I mean, would enjoy playing against teams like Leon. But where he's playing at the moment, I don't think it's the highest level of football. So we cannot really continue to compare him to Messi now because... He's playing in the league even where 30 year olds go and play. Zlatan is almost 40, he's playing. So it's a joke. Even the pace at which they play the game, you realize the Italian Serie A, it's not the best of leagues. Not the best of leagues. What do you think about that? You can come through on our comment section and uh, we can talk about this. What do you think? Those two games that are on tonight. You're watching The Couch, right here on Zim Papers TV Network. You're on the couch. Remember, you can win a diary and an umbrella from GTAL. You simply need to answer the following questions. So the first question uh, we're asking today is, when will Zimbabwe play Algeria home and away? The second one, name any one player from Zimbabwe who scored against Algeria in 2017. And the third one, name one player from Algeria and one from Zimbabwe in the EPL. Just hashtag the couch uh, on the couch uh, for, you know, on any of our social media platforms and give us the answers. When we come back, we discuss and we look at the decision by CAF to ban Zimbabwe from using any of the available stadiums uh, for international stadiums, and that and what and how it will impact, you know, on uh, um, on, uh, on Zimbabwe when they first uh, face uh, Algeria in back-to-back -back Afghan qualifiers. Stay with us.
So our topic today is can Zimbabwe contain Algeria and those back-to-back -back Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers at the end of next month. And uh, to add to <coughs> that, uh, well, there is real danger being posed there by the Desert Foxes as a bombshell was dropped yesterday in Zimbabwe football. Yes, Zifa announced that uh, the Confederation of African Football have banned the use of local stadiums for international matches as they do not meet set standards. A request by CAF to look into issues raised about Barberfield Stadium was not followed up. Zimbabwe is set to face Algeria on uh, the 26th of March away then. A few days later, on the 29th, they come back home. So maybe for Zimbabwe is going to be home away from home. Yeah, and um, in the statement, Ziva said stadium uh, authorities were notified of CAF's position and the urgent nature of the situation at hand. To date, neither of the three stadium authorities has requested us to invite CAF for another inspection, a position which CAF has said led to the decision to ban all three stadiums are from hosting international matches. Ziva said um, we were in the streets of Harare to get you know, the fans' reaction on this issue. Zimbabwe <laughs> Simen dirim Zimbabwe, who score in Zimbabwe, Saka Chiruda foreign currency cheap to my stadium Zagaziru. Those who can surprise her. Lonia on the Edu, Dagarat on the Redu, my builders, Tinaum no Simen, Tinaum no. So, where are we going wrong? Nina Emma stadiums. To consequent traffic, I've got a Tinamad that shows the Queen of Nona Boreco. So, it's real now painful. Could name government, every single one is a good sochi, she did that. If it's Consequent or no Bora, Redu, she's to Muziranochi, Nemoria said. It's a big blow, but she is my fans. I'm not much of a country, I say, it took one second of a game in Munums, and a queen of Mozambique and of South Africa, and of Zambia, Nona Bora is above. to my research in the of FIFA, they know Zifa, my route, my grounds are got zero. I see you are courageous, Zifa, or a scuba action, you could see what you are FIFA, or team, my grounds are got zero. But what is 39 my team? So these are varied opinions from uh, football fans in Zimbabwe on the issue of uh, that uh, ban uh, by CAF on uh, Zimbabwe's uh, international matches. So no match is going to be played here in Zimbabwe uh, well, unless until something happens from Zifa because uh, from that statement that Shamil was reading, they are going to appeal. I don't know if it's going to happen, but uh, we've got uh, a Warriors fan in studio, our guest artist, Butis. He's a comedian. But obviously, this issue also affects you because uh, I've seen you at some Warriors games, uh, mm -hmm. Zera and, and, and yeah. all that. Uh, listening to those fans, how does that make you feel as, as one of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just you know, nuggets. So not was Swiss. Would it in the at Sukan Sautambera Bora Munikamedu? Would it and one that Saranima Bora jet? Eh? My bread and the Anukan said, a good tea or tab. And out I got to own the eighty foot. I see the mag ground jet. I tell it in a two, my Bora versus Algeria. All right, all right. Plus, question a Tanga and Garut or a Wunzi. And when is uh, Zimbabwe playing Algeria home and away? You have to the away and away. Because there is no more home. <laughs> we have to correct that. So I'm um, going to know Suiza. Then runs are even going to lamp at the Jay Jay. Angaru Tower, Pangaru Vonsons, why Magaro and Zuro, Chels, Angaru Tower and Yaya. I should know. Or Kumana Waka Poganda Quaff time. 
wakabwa wanzi wanyuzi zekuti ma games hachatambiru wa mzimbabwe <laughs> saka waka afektika psychologically so awanozo kwansa unyazo tamba bozi they, they have a asset at unungu zwane ni noro ndo ye zimbabwe zimbabwe nda ujiria we, 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 we come a long way uh, unona mm. so ashaka uh, wabata and you know they lost it's sad so vana unungu ziyasa chosfat kana yes. putis yes havazi yotu nungu admire <laughs> Admire no no government. Yeah, no government name. The oh, mochari right. name. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has Tanga in his comment? Ah, long time, long time back. Ndru primary chaiko. Primary then zikano na unzi masebelebe. Rimwe zita irora, iroro. Dere pass. Richard Zombuda zaro. But as vira kure mdara. Even the chiru kumusha chaiko kumrewa. Eh, community, the village. Naito zikano ni tumbuya. Netuma kule ndi chino chaka mombe. Netungo zikana onze mkuma na wea wea. Wechi. We, 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 masini. My bad. Masebe lebe. Yes. Kwa hivyo kuti budisi wachi unuzo wazo nore. Dugo na uzo kuza angu time time. Anu, ngota ora. Joe wada ukunzo. Alright, ya. Ya, ndi unuzo ya budisi nofe kwa mtsoka rea. But rangu manja resire mtsoka. Dereji, dere pa moyo. Kwa zando ita komedi, zando ita ji. I warm people's hearts. Saka. Dinonzi ji, buti sireji, remoyo. Ndopa no vazita raju. Ndopa no vazita raju. Yes. All right. We'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, you tell us more what you do in life and uh, besides comedy. Mm -hmm. Is it just comedy? Mm -hmm. And uh, is it really paying the bills? All right. Well, the developments of the stadium um, ban uh, means Zimbabwe could face Algeria on 29 March outside Zimbabwe at a neutral venue as it were. They will first play away on uh, March 26 in that Afghan qualifier. Remember, Algeria are top of the group with six points, while Zimbabwe are second with four points. Botswana with a point and Zambia with no points complete uh, the group. We talked to H Metro, uh, we talked to H Metro Deputy Editor Charles Mushinga to tell us about uh, you know what this means for Zimbabwe. This is a big blow, not just to the Warriors, but to Zimbabwean football as a whole. It marks the beginning of the death of football in the country, because if football has to be played elsewhere by your own countrymen, and there is no grave situation like a war in the country, um, then we have to ask big, huge questions about the administration of the game in the country. Um, as it stands, we have no administration, that's why the players will have to get somewhere and then travel to another country just to play football. It means their fans won't be there. Yes, a few diasporans who enjoy the, um, the benefits that come along with watching their own countrymen play in a foreign land. But in terms of football in Zimbabwe, this is as low as it gets. Um, since independence, we've never had to play football elsewhere outside the country. And to me, this is a new law, 40 years after independence, when we are supposed to be starting life um, as a country, we are going down these depths. I think something has to be done, and it has to be done now. So that's uh, Zim Paper's H Metro's uh, deputy editor, Charles Mushinga. So besides, you know, that fans perspective that we heard and also what this means from uh, Charles. Uh, we also trying to get a business perspective because a lot happens when we play these games. You go to the stadium, people pay money. But what does this really mean that Zimbabwe is going to be playing home away from home? So we talked to a former banker and football administrator, Andy Hodges. The issue of stadiums in Zimbabwe being in disrepair is not something new. It's been going on for, I would say, at least over 20 years. And the issue, I think, is both financial and administrative. If you look at what happens in stadiums, a city council, for example, gets only about 20% of gate takings of home matches that are played there from the football clubs. And that depends really on the amount of supporters that comes in the club. So if, for example, one supporter comes in the club, the city or council in whatever city only gets 20% of that one supporter. So if they, for example, pay $10, they may only get uh, $2 of that in their coffers. There is no fixed rate. On the other side, of course, the clubs cannot afford to pay city council in terms of the actual fees for renting out a proper stadium. It's just not viable. They don't have the money. So what you have is you have a situation where you're a rock and a hard place. It means that city councils around the country need to use their own money or rate 
take payers' money to be able to improve the stadiums and upgrade them to world-class standards, and that's very expensive. And the question on the other side is, and the rate payers will ask the council this, where are they going to get the money to be able to refurbish these stadiums, which could cost millions of dollars? And that's the major question, because it isn't, it isn't coming from the football clubs themselves, because the city council will never be able to break even on their stadiums through just Premier League games or matches being played at their stadium. On the club side, the problem that they have, of course, is that they don't have the resources to build their own stadium or operate their own stadiums. They have to rent out stadiums. And they are also in the same catch-22 situation. How can they afford to pay commercial rates to councils or football ground owners to be able to use the facilities effectively? And therein lies the dilemma. The question, of course, is who's to blame for this? And I think blame can be shared amongst all. On the one side, City Council have known about the state of stadiums for, as I said, many, many years and have done nothing about it, probably due to finances. Money was being utilized for other things, such as road construction, garbage collection, and so forth. The clubs, on the other hand, have no incentive. Zifa and the Premier Soccer League have no incentive to renovate the stadiums. Again, did they have the money to do it? I don't think so. So as a result, you're going to have this blame game. You're going to have the FIFA and Premier League saying, we told councils that the stadium are not up to par. And we're going to have councils saying, well, the Premier League are not paying enough for up to upgrade the stadiums. At the end of the day, who suffers? Zimbabwean football. So that's Andy Hodges. He's a former banker, a f former football administrator as well, also adding his voice to this issue that we are talking about uh, today. So, Macon Borero. The year 2000, we were awarded the rights to host the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah. And um, the inspectors came, and they were taken to Sakuba Stadium in Mutare. And uh, what they saw there uh, just concluded, uh, you know, their visit. They said, you guys, you are not prepared. So wh wh what has happened? Where have we gone wrong? We have hosted international matches here since that time. And now to be told that... Uh, we can't host any match, any more international matches. Yeah, look, I, I find that hard to believe. I've traveled across Africa. I've seen horrible places where football is played. And such places cannot be called stadiums. There's a ground in uh, Guinea, Conakry, where Oroya play. There are grounds in Lesotho. There are grounds in Burkina Faso. Ah, I don't know, man. Um, there's something fishy about this story. To believe that um, Baba Fields cannot host an international game, you then start to wonder, are there some forces at play? Because if this needs to be addressed, then... And also one question, where is the calf later that says Baba Fields is banned? These are questions that the journalists are not asking. Zifa have said, calf have told us that Baba Fields is not allowed to host international matches. Fair and fine. Where's the correspondence? No, they, they were saying they were given a temporary reprieve for FC Platinum who were playing in the CAF Championship. Fair and fine now. They said, so where is the latest communication? Where is Guesela drawing the statement that he wrote yesterday from? So you understand when people from Bulawa think that there's something sinister going on. Because really, where is the communication? Is Baba Fils up to scratch? No, it's not. But can work be done? Yes, it can. Before the 27th, the yes say it can be done. But where's the communication from CAF? <clears throat> it's, it's a good thing we've got uh, two guys here who have played uh, for the Warriors and who have played, <laughs> <laughs> who have played in, in, uh, in, in the stadia around Zimbabwe. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'll come to you, Joe, because yeah. uh, why, why to you? You are a coach now yeah. and you played for the Warriors. In the said stadiums, and Macombolero brought in another perspective. You know, if you go around Africa, yeah. I've also traveled extensively around Africa, okay. and I've seen some stadiums. You go to Senegal, you go to Burkina yeah. Faso, yeah. but they are still playing in those. <clears throat> Has the situation deteriorated to that extent that uh, we can go and play in South Africa or in Zambia? I I also agree with Mark on that. Uh, we have played in West. West stadiums. Uh, I remember we went to play one day in Ka, Central African Republic, whereby if you were playing right back on the other team, you know, you'll see maybe half of the head of the, the right back who's playing for the opposition <laughs> because of, you know, <clears throat> but those stadiums, I'm sure they're still uh, used now. Uh, I've seen also stadiums in, in Rwanda, and uh, truly speaking, 
uh, I don't think uh, Papa Fields has come uh, to that uh, stadium whereby we cannot host the Warriors. Uh, I think something uh, is not right, something is missing there. Because we, I've been there uh, at Papa Fields in December, and uh, to tell you the truth, there is everything, almost everything that uh, a club or a country would need. Uh, maybe the only thing that I didn't see was uh, for the media, the media room or, or stuff like that. But going into the changing rooms at Papa Fields, there is everything that any, any club or any country might need. So for CAF to say we cannot play at Papa Fields, uh, I really find it amusing. Mo, there's uh, an issue that uh, Zifa has constantly been harping about. It's uh, the club, FIFA club licensing. And uh, it talks about empowering clubs, even the issue of stadia and, and, and all that. Did the authorities sleep on duty? I think uh, if you look at uh, the pitches that were supposed to be homologated or that were inspected by CAF when they came through last year, it was the National Sports Stadium. Uh, but BF and then uh, Mandawa Stadium. Mandawa Stadium. Um, for the National Sports Stadium, I think uh, the government could have done better, uh, not necessarily because of soccer or anything, but it's our National Stadium. We do everything there. That's, that stadium has got to be way, way better than the state it is right now, especially the playing pitch itself. And if you look at uh, the National Sports Stadium, in terms of what requirements are needed by CAF for it to be passed as a suitable venue, everything is there. It just needs to probably paint it or, you know, there are little touch-ups that need to be done at the National Everything is there. The space is there. Whatever they want, it's there. You go to BF. BF, uh, there was an issue, the big issue was with um, uh, the lighting if the match is going to be played at night, floodlights. But uh, if I am BCC, Blaue City Council, Ziva writes to me, says, CAF requires one, two, three, four, five. What motivation is it for me to fix that? No, I, 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 Ziva, I, I hear you. Yeah, because I hear you. Wait, 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 wait. Urukur Wadzi, what the way uh, I'm also... Yeah, but there are some pictures that, that we've got on our, on our video. Yeah. These are African stadiums. Mm -hmm. These. Look, look at them. Yeah. Look at them. Then you you come back to what we've got here. Uh, where where have we been? I, I asked Macom Borero because mm -hmm. since uh, 2000, yeah. when we were awarded the rights to host mm -hmm. the Africa Cup of Nations, other countries have been building. Other countries have been building, yes. and they've been building through the government. If you look at uh, Zambia, they've got two new stadiums. All the stadiums were built by the Chinese. The capacity itself, if you look at the city of Harare, they do not have the capacity to build stadiums because... There's too many things that are happening that they also need to share the money that is coming from uh, revenue collection. They cannot put it all into their stadiums. BCC, same thing. Mandava, why would they want... They will, I was talking to the chairman last time when he was in Harare. He said, ah, we're going to look into it uh, before we start the next campaign. So to them, it, it's not an urgent issue. So issue of funds, like Andy Hodges uh, rightly said, it's, it's uh, central to this. And I think the only route would be for government to come in and make sure that we have proper state there. You know what, Howard? Uh, here's my thinking. <coughs> this business of administering football like we're administering a church, it needs to stop. Um, CAF is one of the most corrupt organizations I've ever seen in my life. And to have inspectors who come here and go back to their base, passing the only stadium that you have in Zimbabwe, not suitable, it means that somebody is at Zifa, somebody at the Sports Commission is sleeping on the wheel. Kai was the most corrupt. I, I wanted to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> they were approved. I, I wanted to you ask you. So, I mean, yeah. look, there are four people, four individuals yeah. from war torn countries, some who are poor, some who are wearing fake Adidas. They come <laughs> to inspect <laughs> your stadium. And you see that they are raising issues. No, Abang, fix this, fix that. Well, what, what, are, what, are, what are some of these issues that were raised? They said, look, um, the, the one of the technical benches at uh, BF, they need to be sorted. It, there needs to be a doping room. Those issues. The perimeter fence needs to be painted. Stuff like that. Not big issues that stops football from being played. 
So you said, guys, look, um, as you travel, as you travel, just <laughs> when you pass through Oara Tamp, can you pass by that uh, perfume shop, buy something for your wife, and uh, we'll get in touch with you? That is how football is administered in Africa. This, we have reports of CAF abusing fans. It's the most corrupt organizations ever. So, don't so you if, think you if you fail to play a game like that, if you fail to convince four people to make a decision in your favor, then what else can you do? All right. Why are you administering the game? Well, we'll come back to, to that issue because I've, I've got questions for you. Yeah. You know, because I've also been hearing rumors mm. about uh, the relationship, you know, if the relationship uh, between uh, the Kosafa president and the Zimbabwe Football Association uh, president, and uh, they've got a fractious relationship, uh, maybe Oxford and Amasimba, you know, We'll talk about that. Now, let's just briefly go to, to, to Joe, because uh, why Joe? He's a legend of um, an Algerian battle. Joe, he was part of the 20, 2004 national team that qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations finals. And the captain of that team was Peter Ndlovu. Zimbabwe lost Group C matches against Cameroon. We lost 5-3. Against Egypt, it was 2-1. And then... On our last match, these guys defied odds to defeat Algeria 2-1. And Lupata, he was a thorn in the Algerians' flesh. Uh, Lupata, we, we've got this stadium issue, and we will be talking about But just take us back, you know, that, that game. How, how was it? What memories do, do, does that game bring to you when you think about it? Um, uh, it was a very, very difficult game, uh, I should say. But... Uh, we felt we had nothing to lose. Uh, here is Algeria, one of the biggest uh, teams in Africa. Uh, we had uh, a good game versus Egypt where we lost 2-1. Uh, then we had also a good game versus Cameroon, even though we lost. We felt we had, you know, tried. We did not even let down the country. So here is the game. We've got nothing to lose. And I remember we were promised uh, 3,000 US dollars if we win because they knew we were going to lose. So somebody came and said, you win this game, we're giving you 3,000 US because they knew we were going to lose the game. But uh, we just said, guys, we've got nothing to lose. Let's just go at these people. But uh, the moment we stepped into the field of play, things were different. You know, you're going, you think you're going versus a Goliath. Then one or two passes, you see, you're going through. Then we started to, to have that confidence. We grew in confidence, and we believed we can win. And also, we had to do it for the money, because we had lost <laughs> the first two games, and <coughs> so did, we wanted did you, did you get the money? Yeah, we, we got it. Yeah, because our, our friends yeah, from okay. Zifa, you know... But we still owed something from 2004. <laughs> 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 so I, I'm just looking at this, the, the current crop of uh, yes. the Warriors that we've got. Uh, look, uh, knowledge, so and Akama yeah. Bilet have been yeah. the mainstay of that team. Yeah. So they played against Algeria uh, 2017 at the Cup of Nations finals. Yeah. So there's been um, uh, a good omen for us. Yeah. But now Algeria, they are African champions. Exactly. Are we a match for them? Uh, I've got so much belief in, in our boys. Uh, I think this crop of players that we have now, it's uh, one of the, the best players uh, to be assembled after a long time. And I think it is up to them, these young boys, to, to go into that room and have that meeting and say, guys, we can do this. Because at the end of the day, it is about the players that are going to play. The belief, the self-belief that they have, we can do this. Uh, Algeria is a very dangerous team, very, very good team. But with the boys that we have, uh, I think if everything is done well, because the other problem that we have been having is the preparations are always bad for, for us. And you'll see the boys will be coming now, and then there are these issues. Uh, they, there's no water for, for the players. So these small, small things, they, they define the results. So, so even playing away from home, you still believe? Yeah, if... If they don't believe that they can win, then uh, they are not going to win. But I think we can go to Algeria and get a draw. Uh, we want to go there and win, but if they can get a draw, mm -hmm. then coming away also, 
uh, since we'll be playing away, coming <laughs> away also, <laughs> you know, we just have to try and make sure that we don't lose these two games. Mm. Shamay, people will ask what happened after the 2004 to be where we are today. Well, to be honest, a lot has happened, Howard. And, you know, uh, since then, Zimbabwe, you know, would go on to qualify for the finals again in 2006, 2017, and 2019. It was at the 2017 Afghan finals in Egypt that Zimbabwe came face-to-face -face again, you know, with Algeria in a competitive game, and it ended 2-2. It didn't matter, you know, they had uh, Riyad Mahrez, who is still there and is their captain. That was really a massive result, Howard. Yeah, it was a, a massive result, and we always look back to that because I think uh, three, four players are still playing in that Algerian team. Yes, some of our guys, uh, Costa Namenos is no longer with the team. Elisha Moroyo as well, he was playing there, he's not with the team. But I'd like to believe we've got uh, even better players now. Uh, but there are some names, you know, you want to look at Algeria <laughs> that sent Shivas down anybody's spine. What do you do? when you face a team like that? I think uh, what, what we, we can do is, uh, you know, as players, uh, when you're playing a, a big team, a champion, you don't need uh, any motivation from anywhere. The fact that you're playing the African champions, it motivates you. It's an opportunity for you to, to be actually scouted if you play well. So... Playing Algeria itself is motivation enough. You don't need anyone, not Zifa, not money, nothing. So I think uh, with the quality that we have at the moment and uh, the coming in of uh, young Tino Kadewere, who has been uh, enjoying a good season, scoring left, right and centre, I think we, we, we really have a chance. All right, let's look at head-to-head uh, -head <coughs> statistics between Zimbabwe and Algeria. Uh, 1989, uh, it was a FIFA World Cup match, so we lost 3-0. Uh, 89 again, we lost 2-1 in the reverse fixture, and this was played here in Zimbabwe. 2004, Africa Cup of Nations, we beat Algeria 2-1. 2004, FIFA World Cup, we drew 1-0 with Algeria. 2005, it was a 2-0 draw. Uh, FIFA World Cup, then 2017, a 2-0 draw. Africa... These stats, they, they, you know, I, I, I feel encouraged looking at these stats. They say, yeah, history maybe is for the dustbins, but when I look at this, I feel confident. Well, look, yeah, if you are a history man, but look, this Algerian side that we have now, in the Algerian side that we drew with 2 or they're two different Algerias. The name is the same, but the way they go about business is a bit different. Um, these guys speak about believing that they can beat them. Yeah, well, but I would choose to go with caution. Don't go out there believing that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Algeria because you'll get a smacking. I would think just go and try to minimize damage. If you can get a 0-0, zero -zero, then that's fine. Believing that you can beat them is a dangerous idea because we can't. We need to be honest. I think realism needs to come in. It's good to be confident, Joe, but there's a time when you need to, to be realistic that if you're playing away in Algeria, if you get a draw, you've won. That should be at the back of your mind. If you, if you get a draw, you've won the game. But believing that you can go there and beat them too new. It's a bit you, of a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch. It's like you walking up to Tyson Fury and saying, let's go, let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... You, you grew up in Moreo, uh, at my. Yes. What did you say Moreo? Hakuna. Maybe I'm going to go. I'm Sami Michel. Because we, we, we used to have a team from there, you know, St. Mm. Paul's. Yeah. yeah and uh, here in 1966? Yeah, yeah they, they were a really big team. All right. And they were playing at the St. Paul's uh, Stadium. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it is a chaparara. Then was in the Pache Mondoroga, but I end up in the schools. Ah, Raja to Parara. But I was Pagongo to Agaranichim Ding. But I think it is a lot of us. This is a year, no, I don't do to guide, but no, I think still they are made in one dear one. Neza quit. 
almost my national events edwe sati now i got one day we know go teach him a buzz and it doesn't i know it marari we we go to national sports tika funga they my church any church yangu bata ka marikai iru vayangu ono vumirwa wanu 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 sikira waka isa machea waka ungana wati pakati pe stadium mu mu tafu machu cha imu cha imu imu national eh? sports stadium eh kana yoyo ino nzuwa waka kana yoyo nzi yaka wakwa zagadi ino suko opa kuneta ambu ya wangu cha yoyo kumusha wako vaitu wene poto ya yoyo wano zeoti ii poto ii ndo ino wari ndo ino bikiru wa derere ii ndo ino bikiru wa saza umu mundo umu no sufra iru watu mazai tuwe uku zata ii chengeta pa musha pakanga paura yo one uku pane imwe poto yanga ri special so tika waka waka tunzimbo itoto tukango siena siena toti aruda kuitu all night yake acha enda ka mustadium munotambirwa bora kwa kuvhisa magedi go ko pe zvinoitwa na mbuya wangu mbuya wangu anoziva mapoto ii poto ii inobikirwa chakati chakati um, maybe we need an all night <laughs> Then we invite one we come for a re-inspection. Re yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then we inspect your kwacho kuri kuda paine vha foot. Kuti kuti zvo ta replay tone kuti hapana kubirirwa here. Yeah, admire kujangaira, you know he must put us he's our guest artist today. We try to you know, we try to shoot things up and uh, bring in a comedian. So yeah, admire is still here with us. Yes, yes. Um, remember, guys, you can be in a diary and umbrella from GTOL. You simply need to answer the following questions. And the uh, first question that we're asking today is, when will Zimbabwe play Algeria home and away? Which is which has now become away and away. <laughs> and the second one, name any one player from Zimbabwe who scored against Algeria in 2017. The last one, name one player from Algeria and one from Zimbabwe in the EPL. And just hashtag the couch on any of your uh, of our social media platforms and give us uh, the answers. Stay with us. Watch on the couch uh, right here on uh, Zimpaper's TV network. Uh, you can also go on uh, to our website www.zn.zw. Uh, and uh, in the studio, we've got uh, our guest artist, uh, Admire Kujangaira, known as uh, Butisi or Josfat. Yeah. Remember, uh, what all runs? Masebelebe. Masebelebe. Yeah, I don't know what Sebele that means. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we are talking about the issue of stadiums. We're talking about Algeria, because we're playing against Algeria. Yeah. So, Zimbabwe has got a new coach. His name is uh, Zdravko Logarusic. Wambo Munzwa. Ndrungo Munzwa. In a new territory, it's a new game. But Ndrungo Munzwa. Utera Zwichi. In it. I just Comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, farm by the comedy because we do as Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you go farm by? Comedy zuru farm by mdara. Eh, pane movement iruto itika. Eh, kana oruko kana wango ruwoche the space. Um, mazondo kumbo farm by ni nonzi simuka comedy. Ana dog vikela ana tina e ni wamu agasi na sena orita ama stand up comedy um, uh, shows around the country like. Um, Pa 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 pa. Uh, pa na 14 February pa Valentine's. Ba mungo aru mashingo ina wazin bulawayo. And um, this coming week, week ra titori irori. On Friday tetiri pa Rips Theater. And um, on Saturday tetiri ukwekwe. So all those are gigs. Eguti wanawanengu wa chibada la kupinda. And you know how it is. Rips. So gara chingo za za. It's a full house. Mm. I, li I like the issue ya kubada la. Oh yeah, so, oh yeah. 
Zuru badara mabiuzi zani? Ee zuru badara mabiuzi wana rutoe nda uchikoro. Ee zimungu watu tumbo jikoni mazai. <laughs> Kana doi risipo. Mtu wana umare kuna upinda kupora. Ee. <laughs> Maa kusada Afrika muna indere. Bora rika isu kusada Afrika. Haa juu za masapota tinaokare. Mza bochke. South Africa. Yeah. Munga nuta urezo inyi zimwe nyika. Ah, South Africa tinevana. So besides comedy, what, what else do you do? Um, in, in, I, I studied film and television production. So I'm a filmmaker. Um, and um, yes, uh, at Suda Opritenda. I will zoom papers. And you don't guarantee behind the scenes, but that's dripping on TV. Uno zoa zuno itika. And uh, I'm a father, a neighbor, and a brother. Okay. And a husband. Put this in more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to you, Bridges. Now, to yeah. get an idea of what we are trying to contain, you know, we look at Algeria's starting line up against Botswana. They lined up as follows Rias Mbohi, Asa Mandi, Dijmel, Ben Lamri, Remy Benzbaini, um, Sofiane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those, those, those are some of the names that uh, Zimbabwe will be coming up against. You can, you can tell from Shermaine, you know, the difficulty in pronouncing the names. I'm sure it won't come to that on the field of play. I don't know Makumbare, but uh, look, Rasmboli was there uh, when Zimbabwe drew two or He was between the sticks, mm. and I, I remember a couple of saves that he made. Uh, Kamabeli acknowledged Musona, and a couple of. Uh, the guys there, Benlami was there, Sofiane Feguli was also there, um, um, Islam Slimani and Yosef Belali. So it, it's, it's the, 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 the bigger number of the, the, the guys yeah, were there. This is the team that played against Botswana. It's the team, but it's a different team. I think I had a chat with one guy um, when they came back from Afghan. I don't know, Joe, you can testify. He said, Mdara, I don't know change gear. Algerians, they have a way of play. They surprise you. I remember one boy told me that, uh, but it was Senegal, uh, that um, Sergio Mane told him that when you get to 65 and you're still fit, I are a player. And they go to 65. Then the, there's a break in play, people are drinking water. Then he came and said, my brother, football has started. And from then on, I didn't see him. He just switched into a gear. So I, I don't know, maybe mentally we are ready for that, but... Uh, this whole thing, it affects the, the players' minds. Are you playing at home? No, you have a new coach. Okay. Can you speak English well? Yes, yeah, so, so. So how do you communicate? All these issues. Kamambo said he speaks English very well. Ah, but you saw him when he came here. He started talking of crisis and whatnot. No, he doesn't speak English. He said, English. yeah, my English is not good. <coughs> yeah, he said, I'll try to make you understand. Look, let, let's go to Joe. Because uh, it's interesting, you're a coach, yeah. and we've got players like Riyad Maris. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, you, Sofiane Feguli, yeah. players who top, who play at the highest level. Exactly. You know, they are playing UEFA Champions League, and you know the the kind of players that we've got. How do you set up a team to stop a marauding side like that? I think as a coach, like what Mark is saying, you don't go there to stop Algeria. Because I think us as, as a country, as Zimbabwe, we should have our own, our own goal. And like we say, guys, this is Algeria. We want to go there and get a result. And that result, it, it, we have to be realistic. Guys, if we go to Algeria and bring a point, we would have done our best. And because it's very, very difficult, like what he's saying. Those people, they can change gear at any time. These are top, top players. Uh, you can try and stop him for 80 minutes, but in those 10 minutes, they can change the complexion of the game. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very, very difficult. And you cannot plan against these players because you don't know which kind, wh which Marines is going to come or is going to turn up for that day. These players are very, very uh, top players that are coached at the highest level. So mm -hmm. it becomes very, very difficult uh, f for us if we try to go toe to toe. Yeah. More is here. Um... And one thing that I like, Mo played for Ghana's. They played uh, in the CAF Champions League yes. against a team that came from the Maghreb nations. Mm -hmm. They played against Al-Akli. They played the same type of football. Exactly. So 
How did you approach that game? Because they came here, you played at Trafara, <coughs> you won 1-0. And these are the names that are there. Uh, How did you prepare for, for that game? Uh, from, uh, from the onset, when we, we went to Egypt, we, <laughs> we actually told that uh, once you lose the ball, once we lose the ball, everybody has got to be behind the ball. Wherever you are. Wherever. So that defensive mentality, once you lose the ball, wherever you are, you have to be behind the ball. You have to see the ball in front of you. And then we only had one person up front. So it was difficult. You can soak up the pressure for 70, 80 minutes, but they will still be coming at you. And unfortunately, in soccer, it's only two substitutes that are allowed. Three? Uh, three mm. that are allowed. Uh, you, it's not enough. <laughs> 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 At the time when you say, okay, uh, maybe six, seven people should go out and mm. bring in fresh legs because uh, the kind of uh, play is difficult. And um, we had one, one new, and uh, we wanted to hold on to that. But the way we were playing, there was no way we were going to score. We were only waiting for them to... to, to uh, to, to score. So you think that that's going to be No, I, I think we... Zimbabwe, we, Algeria? The, the, our approach now is not going to be like that. Um, I think looking at our group, we still have a chance if we lose in Algeria and get a result in the return match, wherever we are going to play it, then we make sure that we do the business against Botswana and Zambia. So I think it's an opportunity for us because this is just uh, the third match. We can actually go all out. Let's, let's try them. They know that there's Kama Billiard. They know that there's Knowledge Musona. They all know about um, uh, Kadewere because up there they watch uh, French yeah, League. Most of their players yes. play in France. So if we put that attacking threat, they're also going to give us attention. I think it's an opportunity for us to go and try our, in our, our attacking game. Yeah, If we lose that match, fine. We still have a chance to, to qualify. Listening to these guys talk, do you think we we'll even get a, a point <laughs> from Algeria. Uh, well, listening to these guys talk, I don't think so. <laughs> well, so you're asking, you know, here, who can stop this man, Riyad Mahrez? Well, it's important to discuss this because in the next days, the Warriors technical team is coming up with a squad to face Algeria. Painful as it is, maybe that the Warriors will play both matches away. Football will still have to be played. Yeah, one of uh, Algeria's uh, biggest strength is that they also have a big goalkeeper in Rasmboli who plays for our Etifak in Saudi Arabia. He stands at uh, 1.9 meters. Uh, he's really tall. I'm sure you, you can't fancy much high crosses causing problems for them. So we are talking about the game plan here. Yeah, so he was talking about Unwesek uh, Serkwe Bora and, uh, you know, how these guys come at you relentlessly. I think they play in phases. Yeah, they play in phases. Yeah, they, they play, play in phases. Play in phases. So, you, you are coming up with, with, what are you teaching, especially the guys that are coming? Ah, oh, congratulations again. Look, you were with Taiwan, now you are in Harare with uh, Golden Eagles. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about Golden Eagles. <laughs> but, uh, with such, such, such players, you know, how, how do you do it? The game plan now. Do you play him across or you need to have uh, variations? Maybe you try going via the wing, <coughs> you try via the middle. How do you, in terms of game plan? Uh, they have a big goalkeeper and these guys are big. The Algerian players, they are very big at the back. So crosses we can. And I will also agree with more. We've got Kama, we've got uh, Kadewere, we've got uh, Knowledge. These boys have got good trickery. So at the end of the day, if I was the coach, I would put those boys up front as my three main attack. Then I try and make sure that I put a block of people that are going to work out for those, for those boys. Because I'm saying these three boys, anything can happen. Out of the three, somebody can get a goal from nothing. We have seen knowledge scoring goals from nowhere. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to score goals. It's difficult, especially playing away in Algeria. I played there when we, we drew 2 all. 
it's difficult, my brother. The ground, it will be red. Sometimes it will be green. You don't even see your next person here because those people, they are very fanatic in their stadium. So that's one of the things that you, you come across that can disturb you. You don't even know what even more is here if you're saying, my brother, the people, you can't even hear him because <laughs> the, 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 the stadium, is, there's too much noise. So <clears throat> these are the tram cuts that I will, I will try and say, okay, let's try. If we can't get anything, then we try and just soak up the pressure, which I think is also going to be difficult, but we're hoping for mm. the best. Well, we've got new players that are coming into the team. Well, they played some friendly matches, like Macaulay Bond. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> he's playing in the championship. For yeah, he was injured a couple of uh, weeks ago, but he's been playing regularly for Charlton Athletic. Is he going to add anything to the team? Yes, he played in Africa before. Once yes. versus Morocco in his that's, squad. That's once, and I I won't, I won't uh, count on those those new players. I will count on my tested, my tried and tested boys. Uh, for Cole, maybe coming from the bench, I don't know. But uh, you need to take soldiers that have been to war in those situations. But I think those are games where you'd think maybe if we let Katsando was still the we let Katsando of old. You, my brother. If you had uh, Danny Piri, Danny Piri. Yeah, yeah, those guys, yeah, yeah. guys, we can just hustle and hustle mm. and hustle. Because <coughs> to trust knowledge and come to check back and mark, uh, this is a game where you don't need a playmaker, actually. Mm -hmm. Your wingers are your defenders. Mm. Just mark the ball. And, and you also hope for a day where your goalkeeper is in fine form. Because your goalkeeper will be tested. So those two matches, what, what do we expect? Well, we <coughs> expect to lose in Algeria. And I would expect Zifa to be smart. You cannot take Algeria to South Africa, mm. where mm. there are fine stadiums. Yeah. They're at home. Mm. So if we're going to play away, let's go to Mozambique. <laughs> Chichiri Stadium. <laughs> let's go and play there. Yeah, yeah, let's go and play there. Because if we're going to play even bigger, Marez will walk there and say, ah, this ground hosted the World Cup. Nice, stiff, nice everything. They're also home. All right. If we're All going right. to play away, let's go and play in Mozambique. Mm. Yeah, more home and away. What realistically? What we, can we get? Um, I'm believing we're going to get two points, one away, one home. Wow. Yeah. I I I, I like that. So, Joe, I'm not going to ask you about. You know, this is for this guy. <coughs> You're a coach. So, how are things at uh, Golden Eagles? Um, it's it's a, a really really an exciting project. Uh, that made me decide to leave Telwan and come here. Yeah, because, um, you know, I, I was thinking Joe has coached at the highest level. You coached yeah. in the PSL. Yeah. Yes, uh, you know, the team got relegated. Yeah, yeah. it happens in football. Yeah, but right. going to down to Division 2. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you, you need something that excites you in football. And uh, I felt that uh, when I sat down and spoke to the directors, their vision that they had for this club, uh, it made me decide to, to, to leave Telwan and come here to try and grow within their vision because I'm still young in coaching. So I thought that uh, maybe them and myself uh, trying to grow together on, on my side as a coach and on their side as a club so that uh, by the time we reach the PSL, maybe I would have gained a lot of experience because football, what I realize is the way you have played football and the way you're coaching is two different things. It doesn't matter how long, how many years you played football, you still have to go through the mill as a coach. Mm. So last season, they, they, they almost <coughs> got, uh, you know, promoted to Division One. yeah? It was uh, too bad they, they failed on the last hurdle. Uh, came number two. Mm. Um, What's, what's the bigger plan for, for you this season? Uh, obviously, it is to, to try and gain promotion into uh, the first division. And I'm, I'm one person who believes in, in my own ability. And uh, I know it's, uh, there are other coaches also that are trying to, you know, to achieve what I'm trying to achieve. But I believe that in the next two years, this team, with how it is being run, it, it, it's possible to be in the PSL. Mm, so we're talking yeah. about the Warriors. One day you want to cross the Warriors? That's why I came back home 
Uh, oh. I would love uh, one day to be given that opportunity. I saw when I played uh, for the national team uh, how difficult these coaches were going through. So it is something that's exciting me to say we are still yet to qualify for the World Cup. Who knows, maybe... Maybe it will be you. <coughs> you never know. <laughs> if it doesn't happen, <laughs> now maybe it will be you. You never know. Yeah. yeah. Admire Kujanga is still here. Butis, Masebelebe, Josphat. You can pick whatever <laughs> name you, you want to call him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask you, Butis. Anzi, in a more strong one, go with two points. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I'm going to go for one. I'm going to go one. I'm going to go first game. I'm going to go first game. I'm going to go one. Mm. Yeah. And Zinamago shouldn't take the game to South Africa. Tfana went to Kwagango Dar Dar. Ora dia uko kwa Tjaira ati. Yeah yeah yeah. Ati no tino tino sota. Ndi tiri pa bada ndu mati ko cha nya so goneji. Vet. Eh? Vetu ko. Ah, uno zela ndu vunga ngata kuna nyika yakapfava ongezi mpapo. You know like akuna nyika yakapfava kudada. Zvekuti vano enda vachinoti varota. Ah. What happens in the end? We start to realize that pinda bus is going to have five levels. Five levels. English. Yeah, English. Eh, I mean, what? I mean, what? We are now. 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 We are kwa ndo naona mbogaro pasi wachitota ura bozi eh bozi ati sufa na uita unge tungo kandiru wa bora kwa kutonzi naro naro kuma na usi ngebra pina ati pa nito mbogaro wa paitua zuma workshop paitua zuma chichi zili teknikao wanu wachita ura na uta kumana so unodai wodai 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 isaini ya isiti ya teknikao 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 assistant referee you know, but just, I've been dying to ask you this question. <laughs> Say you're on stage, and you do stand up comedy. Mm. And then, um, but how do you get away from that? You know, uh, I, 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 I will laugh at myself, and it, it, it will become a joke. Even when people don't laugh, uh -huh. they go, as, as and they so start laughing. Saying, yes, then, yeah. <laughs> Then that we now mm. there is never a dull moment. But, but, you told me, ah, So I not ah, this was my worst app, uh, but I got my one. Ah, not even. Mm. And do change. Do to change. Yeah, yeah. For but I don't want to talk And the panda but I was a kid. Eh, I worry, worry, go for long. Eh, but it's not into stand up. I guess I can't. Okay. So that don't go to the zoo. We take a Yeah. And then I see that I'm 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 a, I'm a good MC, master of ceremonies, weddings, corporates and stuff. And do mira, do my energy. Okay. Eh, bon try. Saka unes unes maskit zau rubiga. Iya, rubiga, rubiga. Taka pisi rubiga. Chimo chino nzi kufi. Eh. Ano zai kufi uma indi no ya. Taka chiro amu. Nechi song food cha taka nzi. Eh eh eh. Asulam bati imbere. Aiyo aiyo. Shipala iba. Well, thank you very much, Peter, for coming to it. Ah, thank you, thank you so much. So, Admiral Kujangara was our guest artist for today. Yeah, tried. We try to do things a bit different because we normally bring in musicians. They sing on the show, but today we tried uh, comedy. I hope you liked it. I liked it. <laughs> and I know the guys enjoyed it. Uh, you know, so, Joe Lupasla, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And thank you, uh, look, thank your you insights much. on the Algerians, and uh, we certainly hope that will also bring luck to Zimbabwe. Yeah. And uh, we'll get the result that we want. I'm not so sure about Bastet Yamaba, where we're going to play, but he says, let's go yeah, to Mozambique. Mozambique. Mm. Mozambique. You agree? Mozambique. Potato Mozambique. field. No, th <coughs> thanks so much for coming through and all the best with your project uh, with Golden Eagles. Thank you so much. And uh, the usual suspects, Makomborero <laughs> and uh, Mo Moyo. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure for, to be. Thank for, you very for, much. For coming yeah. through. My name is Howard Msonza. Well, the couch for today, done and dusted. We are back again next week. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm Shamaine Chasweka. See you again next week, same place, same time. Goodbye. Thank you.